This video will contain two horror and thriller stories for you to listen and relax to. In the background, soft rain and thunder will be comforting sounds while you listen to the stories. I hope you will find this video peaceful, and I also wish you a good night's sleep. The moon hung low in the night sky, casting feeble light through the twisted branches of the mist. Shrouded forest, a silence, both heavy and pregnant with anticipation, clung to the air like a spectral presence. Beneath this eerie cloak, the abandoned mansion loomed, its crumbling facade obscured by the tendrils of fog. In the clandestine folds of time, a prologue unfolded, echoing the desperate whispers of the past. Victor Blackwood, a malevolent figure draped in the shadows of an unholy ritual, stood within the mansion's grand hall. The air was thick with the scent of incense, and the flickering candles painted grotesque shadows on the ornate walls. Victor, his eyes ablaze with a feverish fervor, chanted incantations that seemed to peel away the fabric of reality itself. The prologue unfurled the chilling tale of forbidden knowledge, of rituals that defied the natural order. As Victor's hands moved through the air, a haunting symphony of arcane words summoned a force beyond comprehension. The walls trembled, and the mansion groaned under the weight of a sinister presence. Amidst this malevolent dance, Isabella Rossi, a woman haunted by the shadows of her own history, took her first steps towards the mansion's forgotten secrets. Her boots crunched on the frosted leaves that carpeted the path, each step echoing like a distant heartbeat. Clutched in her gloved hand, the anonymous letter beckoned her forward, a siren's call to the journalist's insatiable curiosity. The mansion materialized before her like a ghostly apparition, its skeletal structure clawing at the night sky. Ivy, long since bereft of life, clung desperately to its walls, a feeble attempt to conceal the scars etched by time and malevolence. Isabella hesitated at the threshold, where the grandeur of yesteryears had succumbed to decay. The oppressive silence was shattered only by the distant howl of a lonely wind, threading through the skeletal branches like a spectral wail. Her breath, visible in the frigid air, hung like a hesitant promise as she steeled herself for the impending descent into the mansion's depths. In that moment, the echoes of Victor's ritual resonated through the dilapidated halls a haunting chorus that whispered of forgotten horrors. The mansion, standing as both witness and accomplice to the unspeakable, awaited Isabella's inquiry into the shadows that clung to its very soul. With a breath that lingered on the precipice of trepidation and determination, Isabella Rossi crossed the threshold into a realm where the past and present collided, and the ghosts of Victor Blackwood's malevolence awaited their chance to weave their chilling tale once more. The night was cast in an ethereal glow as Isabella Rossi ventured deeper into the heart of the mist, shrouded forest, her footsteps barely audible against the blanket of fallen leaves, echoed a haunting lullaby. The towering trees, draped in tendrils of fog, seemed to lean in as if sharing long-held secrets. Isabella's breath hung in the air, a visible testament to the chill that clung to the atmosphere. A wrought iron gate, rusted and groaning in protest, marked the entrance to the mansion's estate. Each creak of the gate seemed to echo through the stillness of the forest, a disconcerting symphony of metal against silence. Isabella hesitated, her eyes fixed on the looming silhouette of the mansion beyond. It stood as a relic of forgotten nightmares, its decrepit facade whispering tales of bygone horrors. As Isabella passed the threshold, the air itself seemed to thicken with anticipation. The mansion, cloaked in shadows, loomed like a silent sentinel guarding the sins of its past. Isabella's footsteps resonated within the cavernous entry hall, each sound reverberating off the walls like a spectral symphony. Candle sconces, long bereft of life, adorned the walls, casting flickering shadows that danced to a macabre melody. The wood beneath Isabella's feet groaned, as if the mansion itself acknowledged her presence. A sudden gust of wind, laden with the scent of decay, 
extinguished the candles, plunging the hallway into darkness. Isabella's heart quickened. Her senses heightened as the oppressive silence pressed against her eardrums. She fumbled for a flashlight, its feeble beam carving a narrow path through the inky blackness. The mansion seemed to exhale a collective sigh, revealing secrets held within its time-worn walls. As Isabella explored further, she encountered remnants of a forgotten era, dusty portraits of long-dead inhabitants, furniture draped in tattered sheets, and faded wallpaper peeling like the scars of a wounded soul. The air whispered with ghostly echoes of laughter and anguish, interwoven into a haunting tapestry of time. The grand staircase beckoned Isabella upward, its ornate banister groaning beneath her touch. Each step echoed with the resonance of long-forgotten footsteps, the mansion reluctantly relinquishing the echoes of its past. Shadows clung to the corners like malevolent specters, conspiring to keep the mansion's secrets concealed. In a forgotten chamber, Isabella discovered a decaying journal, its pages filled with the manic scrawl of Victor Blackwood. The words leapt off the pages, recounting unspeakable rituals and the pact that bound his malevolent spirit to the mansion. Isabella felt the weight of the past pressing upon her, the walls themselves whispering tales of horror and despair. As the night deepened, Isabella's presence seemed to awaken dormant spirits. The mansion groaned and shivered, its dark history pulsating with a malevolent energy. Unseen eyes watched her every move, and a chilling wind carried the mournful cries of the long dead. In the heart of the mansion, Isabella stood, a lone figure in a tapestry of shadows. The silence, once oppressive, now hung pregnant with anticipation. Little did she know that her journey into the mansion's depths had set in motion a malevolence that hungered for revenge, and the true horrors were yet to unfold. The chill of the mist-clad forest clung to Isabella Rossi as she stepped across the threshold of the decaying mansion. The towering structure loomed overhead, its time-worn facade revealing the scars of forgotten decades. The air inside was thick, with an otherworldly silence, broken only by the creaking floorboards beneath Isabella's hesitant footsteps. A flickering candle in Isabella's trembling hand cast eerie shadows on the walls dancing like ethereal specters in the dim light. The mansion seemed to hold its breath, waiting to exhale the secrets it had guarded for so long. The journalist's heart quickened as she passed through a grand corridor, the walls adorned with fading portraits of long-forgotten Blackwood ancestors. As Isabella delved deeper into the heart of the mansion, the air grew heavy with the weight of the past. Dust motes danced in the pale glow of the moonlight, filtering through tattered curtains, creating an ethereal ballet that seemed to echo the tragic history of the place. The journalist's fingertips grazed the frayed edges of an ancient tapestry, its threads whispering tales of a bygone era. Her breath caught as she uncovered the mansion's dark secrets, Victor Blackwood's twisted rituals, the macabre ceremonies that stained the very foundation of the estate. Each revelation sent shivers down her spine, and the walls seemed to absorb the weight of her growing unease. A sudden gust of wind rattled the mansion's time-worn shutters, and Isabella's heart skipped a beat. The shadows seemed to converge in the corners of the room, taking shape as ethereal figures that watched her every move. Unseen hands traced cold trails along her skin, leaving an unsettling sensation in their wake. Isabella pressed on, driven by an insatiable curiosity and a foreboding sense that the mansion itself was awakening. The air resonated with echoes of tortured whispers, as if the very walls yearned to unburden themselves of the unspeakable horrors they held. In a long-forgotten study, Isabella stumbled upon a hidden chamber concealed behind a bookcase. The room exuded an oppressive energy, and the air grew thick with the stench of decay. An ancient tome, bound in human leather, lay open on a blood-stained altar. Isabella's eyes widened with a mixture of dread and fascination as she deciphered the cryptic incantations that spoke of Victor Blackwood's unholy pact. As Isabella traced the dark passages of the tome, 
The room seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy. Whispers, more pronounced now, reverberated through the chamber, revealing the tragedy that befell those who dared tread the path of the occult. Unbeknownst to Isabella, the malevolent force she had stirred was becoming aware of her presence, and the shadows that clung to the room deepened. The very walls seemed to groan, lamenting the intrusion of the living into their wretched realm. The journalist, absorbed in her discoveries, remained oblivious to the encroaching darkness that hungered for her soul. As she reached the final pages of the forbidden tomb, a distant wail echoed through the mansion, signaling the awakening of a force that had long slumbered in the shadows. The night air clung to the dilapidated mansion like a suffocating shroud, the misty tendrils of the forest outside creeping through the cracks in the time-worn walls. Isabella Rossi, her breath visible in the cold, felt the weight of the past pressing down on her as she ventured further into the mansion's depths. The air was thick with an otherworldly stillness, broken only by the creaking of floorboards beneath her cautious steps. A sudden drop in temperature sent a chill down Isabella's spine, and the flickering candlelight cast dancing shadows on the peeling wallpaper. The mansion seemed to exhale a breath of its own, whispering secrets long confined to the shadows. Isabella's investigative instincts battled with an instinctual fear, a primal understanding that she was not alone in the decaying embrace of the mansion. As Isabella approached the grand staircase, an unsettling resonance echoed through the air. Whispers too soft to discern seemed to resonate from the very walls. The oppressive atmosphere tightened around her, a palpable malevolence that left her skin crawling. The past, now disturbed, clung to the air like a bitter scent. And Isabella realized she had opened a door to a world long forgotten. A sudden gust swept through the corridor, extinguishing the candles. The mansion plunged into an impenetrable darkness, the only sound the echoes of Isabella's hurried breaths. She fumbled for her flashlight, the feeble beam slicing through the black void. The walls seemed to close in, and the mansion itself pulsed with a spectral heartbeat. Whispers grew louder, manifesting into chilling echoes of forgotten voices. Isabella strained to decipher the ethereal conversations, catching fragments of tortured pleas and ominous warnings. The spirits trapped within the mansion stirred from their slumber, now murmured tales of sorrow and despair. A dim glow emanated from the end of the corridor, drawing Isabella forward. In a room shrouded in an eerie radiance, she found a dusty, ornate mirror reflecting her own apprehensive gaze. The surface rippled as if disturbed by an unseen force, distorting Isabella's reflection into a grotesque semblance of her fears. The ominous messages manifested around her. Cryptic symbols etched into the walls, blood red and dripping. Isabella recoiled, her pulse quickening as the messages spoke of vengeance and the inexorable consequences of her intrusion. Victor Blackwood's malevolence, awakened and hungry, reached out from the shadows, an intangible force that sought to punish the living for the sins of the past. Isabella, shrouded in the suffocating grip of the mansion, felt the weight of unseen eyes upon her. The confrontation had begun, and the malevolence she had disturbed now hungered for her soul. The whispers reached a cacophonous crescendo, and in the heart of the mansion's darkness, Isabella stood on the precipice of a confrontation that would test the boundaries between the living and the dead. The mansion, draped in an ethereal silence, seemed to breathe with a malevolence that clung to Isabella's every step. As she ventured deeper into its dilapidated halls, the air grew thick with a palpable sense of dread. The flickering candlelight cast eerie shadows that danced on the cracked walls, playing tricks on Isabella's already frazzled nerves. The weight of the past pressed upon her shoulders, each creaking floorboard echoing with the tortured souls of those who had suffered within these walls. Isabella's flashlight cut through the darkness like a feeble beacon, revealing glimpses of faded wallpaper, peeling away to unveil the mansion's secrets. A whisper, barely audible, slithered through the silence. 
Isabella strained to decipher the words, feeling the tendrils of the unseen reaching for the recesses of her mind. The ghosts of Victor's rituals seemed to claw at her sanity, unraveling the threads of reason that held her together. She stumbled upon a long-forgotten study, its shelves laden with ancient tomes bound in decaying leather. The pungent aroma of aged paper hung in the air as Isabella leafed through the pages, stumbling upon gruesome illustrations depicting the very rituals that had cursed the mansion. A shiver ran down her spine as the illustrations seemed to come alive in the wavering light. The temperature plummeted, and Isabella's breath materialized in ghostly tendrils. The oppressive atmosphere bore down on her, and shadows coalesced into phantasmal figures that lurked in the corners of her vision. Whispers grew into anguished moans, the cries of souls trapped in a ceaseless purgatory. A mirror, tarnished and cracked, caught Isabella's gaze. In its fractured surface, she glimpsed distorted reflections of her own terrified expression. And something else, a silhouette twisted and malevolent, moved with a sinister purpose that defied the laws of reality. Isabella, a disembodied voice murmured, the words a venomous caress against her senses. She turned to confront the spectral presence, her heart pounding in sync with the cadence of the unseen chant that surrounded her. Images from her past intertwined with the supernatural onslaught, blurring the line between memory and nightmare. Faces long buried in the recesses of her mind surfaced, accusing and mournful. The ghostly apparitions mimicked her every move, revealing the deepest recesses of her guilt and regret. In a final crescendo of horror, the walls seemed to bleed with spectral agony, oozing shadows that clung to Isabella's skin. The mansion itself became a living entity, a manifestation of the malevolence she had unleashed. As Isabella teetered on the precipice of madness, a guttural voice resonated through the haunted halls, promising a reckoning for her trespasses. The darkness enveloped her, and the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred, leaving Isabella to confront the consequences of her insatiable curiosity in the heart of the mansion's unrelenting nightmare. Isabella stood alone in the heart of the mansion's decrepit grand hall, the air thick with a tangible malevolence. Shadows danced along the cracked walls, casting twisted shapes that seemed to whisper forgotten secrets. The silence hung heavy, broken only by Isabella's unsteady breaths. The oppressive atmosphere pressed on her, like the weight of unseen eyes boring into her very soul. A dim, flickering candle barely illuminated the space, its feeble light casting long, distorted shadows that seemed to writhe with a life of their own. Isabella's heart raced, a relentless drumbeat echoing through the desolation. A chilling wind moaned through the shattered windows, carrying with it whispers of the mansion's tortured past. Isabella's investigative journey had brought her to this pivotal moment, where the boundary between the living and the dead blurred into a realm of uncertainty. As she advanced deeper into the hall, the temperature plummeted and an ethereal fog materialized, swirling around her like specters, hungry for redemption. The darkness seemed to congeal at the far end of the hall, coalescing into the ominous figure of Victor Blackwood. His spectral form exuded a malevolence that transcended the mortal realm. Hollow eyes locked onto Isabella, the embodiment of decades of resentment and anguish. The whispers intensified, echoing the tormented voices of souls long forgotten. You've awakened the darkness. Isabella, Victor's voice echoed, a chilling symphony of despair. You cannot escape the consequences of meddling with the shadows. Isabella, fueled by a cocktail of fear and determination, clutched a tarnished locket around her neck a relic of her traumatic past. She steeled herself against the encroaching malevolence, her eyes meeting the void within Victor's gaze. I will not let your darkness consume this place, Isabella declared, her voice wavering but resolute. I seek answers, not damnation. The air crackled with an otherworldly energy 
as Isabella and Victor confronted each other in a spectral standoff. The very fabric of reality seemed to ripple as the mansion recoiled from the clash of forces. Images of Victor's twisted rituals flashed before Isabella's eyes, intertwining with her own haunting memories. The boundary between their pasts blurred, and Isabella found herself reliving moments of agony and despair. The walls themselves seemed to groan in pain. In a crescendo of supernatural fury, the room convulsed, and Isabella felt the weight of the mansion's secrets bearing down on her. The locket around her neck pulsed with an otherworldly energy, resonating with the tortured souls entwined in the mansion's history. With a final, gut-wrenching scream, the malevolent force was expelled. Victor's spectral form dissipated into the shadows, leaving behind an eerie calm that settled over the Grand Hall. Isabella, battered and drained, sank to her knees amidst the remnants of the spiritual tempest. The mansion, once a haven for unspeakable horrors, now stood silent. The air, once thick with malevolence, carried a sense of release. Isabella, though scarred by the ordeal, had faced the darkness head. On, unraveling the threads of the mansion's twisted history. Yet, as she caught her breath, a lingering question remained. Had she truly banished the malevolence, or merely sealed it within the mansion's haunted walls? Waiting to be awakened once again, the locket around her neck pulsed faintly, as if holding the echoes of both past and future horrors. Emily Harper's inbox blinked with a cryptic message, an anonymous tip about the Blackwood Mansion, an abandoned relic shrouded in whispered tales of darkness. The mere mention of its name sent shivers down her spine, awakening a dormant curiosity she thought she had buried with the ghosts of her past. The town of Raven's Hollow, tucked away in the forgotten corners of the map, beckoned with an air of mystery. The town itself seemed lost in time, its cobblestone streets echoing with an unsettling silence. Locals, their eyes guarded and voices hushed, cast wary glances at the outsider who dared venture into their forgotten world. As Emily navigated the winding streets, the Blackwood Mansion loomed in the distance, a towering specter of bygone grandeur. Ivy, clad walls whispered secrets, and the wind carried the ghostly echoes of laughter and sorrow. The mansion, a once proud testament to opulence, now stood in eerie contrast. Its windows broken, doors hanging by rusty hinges and shadows dancing within. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that seemed to stretch and reach, as if trying to escape the encroaching darkness. Undeterred, Emily pressed forward, her determination overriding the gnawing sense of trepidation that clung to her like the chill of an unseen specter. The mansion's history was a tapestry of madness, woven by Silas Blackwood, a man whose ambitions led him down a path twisted by the supernatural. Emily's journalistic instincts tingled with anticipation. Here, in the heart of Raven's Hollow, she would unearth the truth that had eluded so many before her. A rickety gate groaned in protest as she entered the mansion grounds, its twisted ironwork seemingly warding off the curious and the faint of heart. The gravel beneath her boots echoed louder than her footsteps should have, the mansion's silent embrace amplifying every sound, real or imagined. The facade of Blackwood Mansion greeted her with a mixture of decay and grandeur. Its once, polished marble now weathered by time, and the intricate woodwork festering with neglect. She traced the patterns with her fingers, feeling the pulse of history beneath the peeling layers. As Emily crossed the threshold, a draft carried the scent of dampness and ancient secrets. Shadows played on the walls like specters dancing to a forgotten melody. She hesitated, feeling the weight of the past press upon her shoulders like an invisible burden. The mansion seemed to awaken, 
whispering secrets only the walls had heard. And Emily, drawn to the intrigue like a moth to a flame, ventured deeper into its heart. The floorboards groaned beneath her, protesting the intrusion of the living into a realm where the boundary between reality and the supernatural blurred. The tale of Blackwood Mansion had just begun, and Emily stood at the precipice of a descent into the unknown, a journey fueled by a journalist's unyielding curiosity and a past begging to be unearthed. The ghosts of Raven's Hollow watched, their spectral eyes fixated on the outsider who dared disturb the echoes of their history. The town exhaled a sepulchral silence as Emily Harper traversed its deserted streets. The cobblestone paths, once witnesses to the lively footfalls of the townsfolk, now echoed only the haunting whispers of a forgotten past. Shadows clung to the time-worn buildings, reluctant to release the secrets embedded in the very fabric of the decaying town. Emily, undeterred by the eerie atmosphere, approached the locals with the practiced charm of an investigative journalist. She sought out the ones who, in hushed tones, would dare to share the tales that others suppressed with trembling lips. Faces weathered by time and burdened with the weight of unspeakable stories met her inquisitive gaze. The town square, a desolate space bordered by crumbling facades, served as the stage for Emily's inquiries. An old man, hunched and with eyes that mirrored the weight of centuries, became her first informant. His voice, a hoarse whisper that cut through the stillness like a spectral breeze, began to unravel the threads of the Blackwood Mansion's dark tapestry. The Blackwood Mansion, lass, he spoke, eyes flickering with a mixture of fear and fascination. Silas Blackwood, the owner, he dabbled in things best left alone. Dark arts and forbidden knowledge clung to that place like a curse. Emily's pen danced across her notebook, capturing every word as if inscribing the whispers of the town's tortured soul. The old man continued, his tales weaving through the history of the mansion like a ghostly apparition. Silas was a man obsessed, he confided, leaning closer as though sharing a forbidden secret. He communed with forces beyond mortal understanding seeking power and immortality. But the more he delved, the more the darkness consumed him. The journalist's eyes glinted with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Her quest for truth had led her to the precipice of a tale that transcended the boundaries of the ordinary. As Emily pressed deeper into the town's collective memory, the whispers grew louder, tales more macabre. The air hung heavy with the scent of untold horrors and each revelation tugged at the veil separating the living from the spectral echoes of the past. Emily discovered accounts of strange happenings, apparitions wandering the mansion's halls, disembodied whispers that carried the burden of forgotten grievances. The town, gripped by fear and superstition, spoke of Silas Blackwood's malevolent legacy, a shadow that lingered over the community like a curse. As the day waned and the moon ascended to claim the night, Emily's notes became a mosaic of dread and fascination. The pieces of a puzzle, once scattered, now assembled into a chilling tableau of a town, steeped in the darkness of its own history. The Blackwood Mansion, with its secrets shrouded in the folds of time, beckoned Emily with an otherworldly allure. The pursuit of truth had become a journey into the heart of a malevolent mystery, and with every whispered tale, the journalist edged closer to the threshold of a haunted reality that awaited within the decaying walls of the mansion. The moon hung low in the midnight sky, casting feeble beams that barely penetrated the dense canopy of ancient trees surrounding the forgotten town. Emily's footsteps echoed through the desolate streets, each one a heartbeat in a town long abandoned by the living. The air was thick with an unsettling stillness, as if the very essence of the place held its breath, waiting for an intruder to disturb its age. Old slumber. As Emily approached, the Blackwood Mansion loomed like a phantom from a forgotten nightmare. Its once majestic architecture, adorned with intricate carvings and stained glass, now lay in ruin. 
Ivy snaked its way up the crumbling walls, and broken windows gaped like hollow eye sockets, staring out into the abyss. The wind whispered through the skeletal remains of the mansion, carrying with it the distant murmur of spectral voices. The wrought iron gate groaned in protest as Emily pushed it open, revealing a courtyard choked with weeds and the remnants of a forgotten garden. Shadows danced across the overgrown lawn, their twisted forms casting sinister silhouettes that seemed to come alive in the moonlight. The mansion, in all its decayed glory, waited like a patient predator for its prey to enter. Stepping over the threshold, Emily found herself in a grand foyer that had witnessed the passage of centuries. The air was heavy with the scent of dust and decay, and the silence within the mansion was oppressive, broken only by the occasional creaking of wood and the distant howl of a night wind. Dust motes hung suspended in the air, catching the moonlight in a spectral ballet. In the dim light, Emily's flashlight cast elongated shadows that seemed to writhe with a life of their own. The walls, adorned with faded wallpaper depicting scenes of opulence from a bygone era, whispered forgotten tales. As Emily ventured further into the mansion's depths, the temperature dropped, and the air seemed to congeal with an otherworldly chill. The mansion became a labyrinth of winding corridors and hidden chambers, each one a testament to the secrets it held. Doorways opened into rooms frozen in time, their furnishings draped in dusty sheets like shrouds for the departed. Emily's senses heightened, every creak and rustle sending shivers down her spine. As she ascended a grand staircase, the echoes of her footsteps mingled with a distant, ghostly wailing. The air pulsated with an ethereal energy, and Emily felt the weight of unseen eyes upon her. The past and present converged in a disorienting dance, and the boundary between the living and the dead blurred with every step. At the top of the staircase, a corridor stretched out before her, its shadows concealing the mansion's darkest secrets. Emily hesitated, her breath catching in her throat as she felt the oppressive presence that lingered in the air. The mansion seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the revelation of an intruder who dared to unearth its long-buried mysteries. With a cautious breath, Emily pressed forward into the heart of the mansion, where the true horrors lay in wait, and the malevolent whispers of Silas Blackwood echoed through the corridors of time. The grand entrance hall of Blackwood Mansion echoed with Emily's hesitant footsteps, the sound reverberating off the peeling wallpaper and faded portraits that adorned the walls. The air was thick with an unsettling stillness, broken only by the occasional creak of the decaying floor beneath her. Dust danced in the dim light filtering through shattered windows, casting eerie shadows that seemed to whisper ancient secrets. As Emily ventured deeper into the mansion, the atmosphere became suffused with an otherworldly chill. A dim glow emanated from a forgotten chandelier, its flickering light casting elongated shadows that danced like spectral apparitions on the walls. The air seemed to carry the weight of centuries, each whispered breath a reminder of the mansion's dark past. Her footsteps led her to a desolate library, shelves lined with dusty tomes that seemed untouched by time. Emily's fingers traced the spines of the books, stopping abruptly at one that seemed to radiate an almost imperceptible energy. The leather-bound volume, embossed with a long-forgotten insignia, held the secrets of Silas Blackwood's descent into madness. As she opened the book, a gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing the feeble flames of ancient candles. Shadows danced across the walls, taking on grotesque forms that seemed to mock her intrusion. The pages of the book rustled as if turned by unseen hands revealing cryptic passages and sketches that hinted at a malevolent force lurking within the mansion. A distant, ethereal whisper filled the room, mingling with the rustle of pages. You should not have come, it hissed, the words echoing in the hollow spaces of Emily's mind. Ignoring the voice, she pressed on, driven by a relentless need to uncover the truth. The mansion seemed to come alive with echoes of the past, Ghostly, apparitions flickered in and out of existence, 
frozen in moments of despair and anguish. The air grew colder, and Emily felt a spectral gaze upon her, as if the very walls of the mansion were observing her every move. In the heart of the library, Emily discovered a hidden compartment, concealed behind a false panel. Inside, she found a collection of old letters, each bearing witness to Silas Blackwood's descent into obsession and madness. The ink on the faded pages seemed to writhe, the words forming a chilling narrative of a man consumed by an ancient malevolence. As Emily delved deeper into the letters, the room darkened further. Shadows coiled around her like serpents, and the temperature plummeted. The letters spoke of a forbidden ritual, an attempt to harness the power of the supernatural, unleashing forces that defied the natural order. With each revelation, the mansion seemed to rebel against her intrusion. The walls groaned, and the whispers grew into a cacophony of spectral voices, urging her to flee. Yet Emily persisted, driven by an insatiable need to uncover the truth that now entwined with her very essence. As she closed the book, the whispers ceased, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The mansion fell into an eerie silence, as if it held its breath in anticipation of the consequences that Emily's revelations might unleash. Unbeknownst to her, the malevolent force within the mansion had taken notice, and the shadows deepened, preparing for the impending clash between the living and the dead. The mansion, draped in the suffocating cloak of twilight, seemed to pulsate with a malevolent energy as Emily ventured further into its shadowy corridors. Flickering candlelight cast grotesque shadows on the cracked walls, and the air carried a scent of long-forgotten secrets. As Emily moved cautiously through the decrepit rooms, the floor groaned beneath her weight, echoing through the desolate mansion like a mournful symphony. The walls seemed to whisper, their ancient timbers creaking with unseen voices, narrating tales of horror long buried in the layers of time. In a dimly lit chamber, Emily discovered a collection of aged photographs, the images captured moments frozen in time, distorted faces staring back with hollow eyes. Among them, Silas Blackwood's visage appeared, his eyes reflecting a madness that transcended the limits of mortality. A sudden chill enveloped the room as the temperature plummeted. Emily's breath materialized in the frigid air, and a soft, haunting melody echoed through the corridor. A lamentation from a bygone era she felt a spectral presence, an unseen force that watched her every move with unrelenting eyes. The whispers intensified, their voices intertwining like a chorus of tormented souls. Emily strained to decipher the spectral symphony, words of regret and despair echoing in the recesses of her mind. Release me, they pleaded, a haunting refrain that resonated with the mansion's tortured history. Turning a corner, Emily found herself in a grand hall, its once opulent splendor now reduced to a spectral ballroom frozen in time. Faint echoes of laughter and distant music lingered, distorted fragments of a celebration long past. The atmosphere thickened and a phantom breeze tousled Emily's hair as unseen dancers twirled in a spectral waltz. The room plunged into darkness and only the pale glow of ethereal candles remained. From the shadows, a figure materialized, a specter clad in tattered finery, its face obscured by the passage of time. Emily's heart raced as the ghostly figure extended a translucent hand, beckoning her to join the macabre dance. Fear clutched at Emily's chest, but an irresistible compulsion drove her forward. She hesitated, her rational mind at war with the supernatural allure. The specter's eyes bore into her soul, revealing the torment of a bygone era etched into its ghostly countenance. As the phantom dance unfolded, Emily became a reluctant participant in a spectral ballet. The whispers reached a crescendo, narrating the tragic tale of Silas Blackwood's descent into madness. The mansion's walls echoing with the collective sorrow of the spirits trapped within. In a sudden burst of otherworldly light, the ghostly dancers vanished, leaving Emily alone in the silent hall. 
The air hung heavy with the weight of the paranormal encounter, and the mansion seemed to exhale a mournful sigh as the echoes of the spectral waltz faded into the darkness. As Emily retreated, the lingering melody lingered in her mind, a haunting reminder that the mansion's history was entwined with the supernatural. The paranormal encounters had intensified, pushing her closer to the heart of the malevolent force that lurked within the decaying walls a force that demanded resolution. The darkness within the mansion clung to Emily like a sinister shroud as she navigated its twisted corridors. Shadows danced along the walls, whispering secrets that sent shivers down her spine. The air was heavy with the weight of the past, each creak of the floorboards echoing the ghostly footsteps of Silas Blackwood. As Emily delved deeper, the spectral encounters intensified, Whispers grew into murmurs, murmurs into anguished wails that reverberated through the abandoned halls. Portraits on the walls seemed to watch her with hollow eyes, their expressions twisted by the torment that had consumed this place. The air was charged with an otherworldly energy, and Emily felt the oppressive presence of Silas drawing her towards a room at the end of a long, dimly lit hallway. The door groaned as she pushed it open, revealing a chamber frozen in time. In the center of the room stood a dusty grand piano, its keys untouched for decades. The walls were adorned with fading tapestries depicting scenes of opulence that had long been forgotten. At the far end, a massive mirror reflected the room back at her. But as Emily gazed into it, the reflection seemed to warp and twist, revealing glimpses of the mansion's dark history. As Emily tentatively approached the piano, a haunting melody echoed through the room. The keys played themselves, an ethereal symphony that seemed to echo Silas's descent into madness. Memories flooded Emily's mind, memories that weren't hers. Silas's memories. She felt his obsession, his spiraling madness fueled by an ancient force that hungered for revenge. Suddenly, the room plunged into darkness and Emily found herself face to face with the ghostly apparition of Silas Blackwood. His eyes, hollow and filled with malevolence, bore into hers. The air turned frigid as he spoke, his voice a spectral whisper that sent tremors through the very core of her being. Emily Harper, he intoned, the words dripping with centuries of bitterness. You dare to unearth the past, but some secrets are meant to remain buried. The room quivered with an unseen force as Silas's apparition advanced, the echoes of his tormented soul reverberating through the mansion. Emily, paralyzed by a mix of fear and fascination, stood her ground. The ghostly encounter unfolded like a nightmarish ballet. Each step Silas took, sending ripples through the fabric of reality. As the confrontation reached its crescendo, Emily felt a surge of power within her a connection to the ancient force that bound Silas to the mansion. With a chilling revelation, she understood the truth. Silas sought resolution, an end to his tortured existence. The room trembled, and Emily, compelled by an unseen force, spoke the words that would either condemn Silas to eternal unrest or grant him the peace he so desperately craved. The words hung in the air, a delicate balance between salvation and damnation as the mansion's malevolent history teetered on the precipice of resolution.